in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah i took out time and prayed my life out on this word because i believe for myself i believe for the ministry and my assignment is to guide you by the spirit tonight to connect truly with what god is saying not just to be aware that he said it hallelujah god lives in the realm of eternity please follow me tonight but his operation with men is fragmented into times and seasons are we together now god is not limited by times and seasons he dwells in the realm of eternity but according to his wisdom and his system of operation the earth is governed by the mystery of times and seasons are we together now so the program of god is spaced between times and seasons and the holy spirit is mandated to supply the grace the illumination the empowerment that is required to maximize seasons so the moment the word of god is released the holy spirit now begins to hover around that word and then by extension upon whoever receives that word if you do not receive the word you do not qualify for the hovering of the spirit he doesn't have any bias to an individual he's following the word so you invite him by receiving the word you don't just invite him by coming it is the spirit and the bride so if you reject the word then you will cannot attract his presence with respect to his dealings in a season is God speaking to us tonight so we must receive his word and then the Holy Spirit comes to energize that word to give you the capacity all the equippings required to make that word true it's not new to us in this ministry we have learned again and again that just because God said something does not guarantee that it will happen correct it says forever O lord thy word is settled not in your life it is settled in heaven it will take you engaging the relevant mysteries of the kingdom to make it in earth as it is in heaven are we together now and so it says i will make you exceeding fruitful i will cause nations to come out of you he says kings will come out of your loins blessed be the name of the lord we'll just walk through a few scriptures and then i'll begin to explain give us some instructions and we pray tonight blessed be the name of the lord genesis chapter 35 please and verse 11 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same we give you From the rising I want you to look at that scripture and God said unto him I am God Almighty so you are not confused who is speaking to you and the power that backs him he says I am God Almighty then he says be fruitful hmm. be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nation shall be of thee then he says and kings Kabbalakushia, shall come out of your loins remember psalm 112 says blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed part of the principles of dominion 
is that your seed must reproduce and replicate you you cannot dominate just with your mind alone you must dominate with your seed you must bring something out of you to reproduce your result this is what confirms dominion so it is in the glory of the saints that the christ is glorified if the saints do not rise in glory then the christ cannot be glorified are we together now it is in the victory of the son that the father is glorified then the saints in partnership with the holy spirit bring glory to the son are we together now then the dominion of the church over creation principalities and powers is where the glory of the church lies i am god be fruitful be fruitful not a suggestion be fruitful Two more scriptures. Psalm 1 and verse 3. Popular but powerful scripture. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper he shall be he's trying to paint the picture of a kind of man that god is describing and he's saying that man will be in the similitude of a tree that is planted by the rivers of water you know sometimes when you study the bible try to understand what god is saying he didn't say by that is planted by the rivers he said the rivers of water then he says that he brings forth his fruit in season and his leaf does not wither and so whatever he does prospers one more scripture john chapter 15 and verse 8 just give us king james if we can have amplified that would be fine john 15 and verse 8 now this scripture is very powerful the bible says when you bear or produce much fruit my father is honored and glorified so there's no point being confused as to how god is glorified it says when you bear much fruit my father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers so fruitfulness is a demonstration is a validation that you were truly mentored by god is proof that you are part of him are we together now King James says, hearing is my father glorified. Hearing. This is how the father is glorified. When you bear much fruit, and he says, by so doing, so shall ye be my disciples. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Paul was teaching on the principle of sowing and reaping and then he said something he says and god is able to make how many that means grace is in dimensions the bible didn't say god is able to make grace all grace there are different kinds of graces and i've defined for you what grace is grace is not just limited to you know unmerited access and all of that grace like love has dimensions I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Every possibility given to the saints that is only routed in Christ is called grace. So anointing is grace. Are we together now? Victory is grace. Wisdom is grace. Grace is like the spiritual warehouse that hosts every tool, every arsenal. That has been stored for the victory of the saints and the bible says there are different kinds of graces wisdom is a grace the anointing is a grace intuition is a grace 
creativity is a grace and the bible says on account of god's desire to make you fruitful he can coordinate all grace that means that god looks at your life and finds out the dimensions of his grace that must be captured in your life for the result he said you produce to be produced and that in his wisdom he is able to make all grace abound the word abound here means to make it within your reach god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency the word sufficiency here is not just abundance of resources alone that means that you are not limited in anything as far as your assignment or your productivity is concerned and then it says that you having sufficiency in all things may abound the goal is to produce good works but the bible says the system is that god will have to assist you so fruitfulness is not something that is just a product of your initiative you have to be assisted by god and the bible says one of the ways that god assists us is that by his intelligence he scans through your life and finds out what dimensions the graces that are not yet there and god is able to make all grace favor is grace he can make that grace abound towards you intelligence is grace divine direction is grace and God is able to make all grace to make all grace to make all grace like instruct them favor go and meet pastor alpha God is able to make he knows that if that dimension of grace is not in your life it will make him look like a liar so he puts pressure on his own integrity and commands that dimension of grace to find a way of colliding with you jesus and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency he says in all things may abound to every good work i believe this for my life all grace so it's no surprise if someone cannot sleep because of me and wakes up in the morning and says i don't know why i was thinking about you i know what is happening in the spirit god is making all grace he's coordinating the tools the possibilities that must be featured in my life all grace if he means him to silence a wicked man somewhere in the village he can make all grace that is grace too judgment is grace because it has the ability to make the word of god come to pass in your life god is able to make all grace so he looks at you at a man of god and knows that there are certain testimonies you need in your ministry for certain people to call your attention so he makes all grace he will direct that grace he knows that for as long as you recycle a particular dimension of testimonies, you will not call on the attention of kings. So he will supply that grace. All grace. He can delay your destiny helper because you were delayed. He will punish another man to make sure you must meet in time. All grace. That is called mercy. All grace. You were supposed to run fast, but you slowed down. Then God makes another man to slow down, to wait for you because you have to meet all grace. Believe what I'm telling you now. My brothers and my sisters, whoever receives this privilege from God is a sign and a wonder. You will look at such lives and marvel. God is able to make all grace. God gave me a revelation of this scripture in my time of retreat and I didn't know what to do with myself again. To make all grace. All grace. I sit down and I discern that you are thirsty. And whoever has water within your vicinity is in trouble because one man is thirsty. I make sure all water find the way, whether it's from a well, whether it's from rain, whether it's from a factory producing water i know you need water so i will coordinate grace is a force it can make things come to you if god knows you need the ministry of men he will make all grace all grace they will come to you and wonder why they are there you will know they didn't bring themselves all grace 
if God sees that the level you are stepping into there is a dimension of consistent prayer contact that you must make to allow your spirit build capacity in a strange way without your requesting it a kind of fire will land on you it's not something that you will try to do it will so quicken you you will wake up and pray non-stop like a madman he's making all grace because what is about to give you he vets your capacity and sees that you are you are not yet built to hold it so he makes all grace and you find out that all through february all his dealings with you is around prayer and fasting and you say god what are you doing it is still all grace because you who cannot fast two days without tasting something you are now going three days dry complete dry i don't mean breaking in the night it's not your human making he's making all grace and by the third day he comes to you and said this is why i put the fast there is a new oil there is a new wine i was shedding off the old wine skin so you can carry something that cannot be disproved we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun mm. We give you say the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the one more time we give you God the highest praise Had, you had the testimony of the gentleman here that an angel can stand up and give you a number all grace he found out that every man he instructed to honor you disobeyed and he said no not even men will stop me if they will not praise me I can raise stones 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 let me tell you it's a fearful thing when God becomes desperate over a man it's a fearful thing to say that the jealousy of God becomes directed towards a man clear the way for that man because there is nothing you can do in time that can interrupt what listen listen I want you to get this I'm showing you the implications of receiving a prophetic word the Holy Ghost is not looking for a man the Holy Ghost is following where the word is so if you receive the word you attract his attention and once he comes that place where the word has been received becomes the center of his activity until the word achieves what it came to do all grace all grace all grace all grace all grace no matter how he would do it he, if it means him overturning all grace must reach you there's something in biology called trophic movements remember we were taught something like that there's geotrophism there's phototrophism it's a system by which plants insist until they grow so if you bend a plant in a way and it needs sunlight it will find a way to squeeze itself until it receives that light if you close it how many of you have seen trees break fence by the root because they need to spread they were not designed to be confined and whoever made a mistake and put a fence on it it will keep quiet like it will shift it until you see the fence cracking how forcible are right words they will push every barrier until the word of God prevails so if God has told you man of God this is your season of appearing I tell you forget about whoever likes you or doesn't like you is a joke when his hand rests upon you he will station all your destiny helpers in a meeting where he will so lavishly anoint you when your enemies testify of God upon your life you have won you have won because the testimony of your enemies is more believable than that of your friends their enmity validates the truthfulness of what they are saying I don't like this pastor but my God I saw it by myself this is the hand of God
look at the scripture again and then we'll deal with a few things and God is able God is able if God were not able then I would be afraid because how will the grace come it's one thing to tell me a possibility but the Bible says God is able let me tell you what it means to be able to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your jurisdiction ah, within your jurisdiction if I have 10 naira and I see a little search of pure water I am able to buy it the resource to make it happen is there is that true if i have a company for instance and i see a young man who is a graduate and trusting god for a job i am able able means it is within your ability so let's go now it says it is within god's ability to make all grace it is within god's ability to bring the anointing it is within god's ability to open you up to a strange dimension of visions and dreams it is within god's ability to manipulate the loyalty of men towards you god is able to make all grace not grace all grace abound towards you that means that the next time you see strange things happening you will not act ignorant again the next time you find out that you wanted to go in the morning and a visitor delayed you and now that you are coming out you meet someone you've been trying to meet you have an interpretation to that coincidence all grace walking by the spirit of wisdom hmm. god has decided to channel his jealousy towards us this year like never before and then declaring that we be fruitful it will be wicked he says it says when i send thee lackest thou anything in other words i cannot send you without equipping you god does not equip you by giving you money he doesn't equip you just by giving no 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 he equips you by giving you something supernatural that will begin to manipulate men to your own wonder why are you helping me and the person says honestly if i had the answer and then you know there is a reason why do you want to buy chairs for my church don't you have a pastor to say I, I i i can't explain why and you know all grace all grace being channeled towards you please sit down so by the spirit of the living god and by the illumination of god's word we know that he's bringing us into a season of extreme productivity He's bringing us to a season of influence. He's bringing us to a season of increase. He's bringing us to a season of unusual results. What does it mean to have extraordinary fruitfulness? It means to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent and ever increasing results to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent ever increasing results what does it mean to be fruitful to be fruitful means to expand to break borders to venture into virgin horizons dimensions never thought possible give us Colossians chapter 1 please and then verse 9 and 10 Colossians 1 9 and 10 very powerful scripture it says for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 10 that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being fruitful in every good work fruitfulness is a time of 
a mighty manifestation of supernatural results in every area every area mighty manifestation of supernatural results fruitfulness also entails a time of restoration a time of restoration until the spirit be poured upon us from on high he says 32 and verse 15 isaiah then he says that the desert land be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it's a time of restoration extraordinary fruitfulness entails a time of great favor great favor one of the evident graces that should be at work in the saints when god declares fruitfulness let's look at the keys very quickly for every door we desire open in the spirit there are keys i'm going to give us two keys tonight very quickly that will control are experiencing extraordinary fruitfulness number one the first key is embracing the ministry of the word please write it down embracing the ministry of the word my brothers and my sisters we are living in times where your neglecting the word will be to your own peril it's not only a prerequisite for your spiritual advancement but it will translate to your success in general the bible likens the word to water are we together now and biology teaches us i hope i'm right forgive me if i'm not but i think i am that the human body contains over 70 percent of water that is the condition among other things for a man to be said to be healthy and alive so if a body leaves because of the abundance of the water in it and that even our own earth as an ecosystem survives because of the abundance of water two-thirds of the world being covered with water then imagine a life without water that's exactly what happens to a spirit without the word. I know a little bit about what the absence of water can do in a human body. It can cause shock and can even kill the person. So when there is no, that water of the word is not at work in you. There is a deficiency. A system was designed in man to detect thirst. And I think they tell us, medical people tell us that by the time you really feel thirsty, your body has already been frustrated demanding water. Is that true? That you shouldn't have to wait until the body gets that thirsty. The ministry of the word. And you know, many times when we say the word of God, many believers just oh yeah yeah you mean scriptures no 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 the word of god is not just a vague compendium of letters for us to cram and quote and recite like a charm for victory no no we must understand what the word of god is i told you that the word of god is a compendium of god's methodology the word of god is a compendium of his system of operation so by the time the Bible says that the word of God dwells in you richly, it means that you come into a full comprehension of God's ways of doing things, that you'll be enlightened, illumination by the Spirit granted unto you, that you will know, know, not awareness, fellowship with the mystery. The ministry of the word. Nobody in the kingdom ever bears fruit ignoring the word he will only bear fruit in season when he is planted by the rivers of water the rivers of the word you will yield your fruit in season and then your leaves will not wither he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and then he says your profiting will appear unto all 
is God blessing us now please write this down there are three dimensions of the Word of God that we must embrace that is tied to fruitfulness number one according to Colossians chapter 1 please leave it there and verse 9 the first dimension of the Word of God that we need is the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will number two the word of God as wisdom number three the word of God manifesting as spiritual understanding so the Bible tells us that I desire that you be filled with these tripartite dimensions one the knowledge of his will that you understand the system of operation of God that you are able to discern his will through it Hebrews chapter 1 says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the fathers and through the prophets verse 2 says had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word which he has appointed to be heir of all things that his most valid instrument for discerning his will is his word it's important you cannot lay claims on the truth of God's word when you are in doubt if it is the will of God that means that you need to search the scripture to find out is it the will of God to prosper me is it the will of God to lift me is it the will of God to heal me is it the will of God for my ministry to flourish is it the will of God to cause me to become a voice over a territory when you know the mystery of his will then you can engage your faith and receive it and then number two wisdom we need the wisdom of God the Bible says every house is built through wisdom and by understanding it is established a house is not built through desire desire only gives you the fortitude to create an atmosphere for the spirit of wisdom to come it says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom the desire brings about separation but it will take the word to administer wisdom listen the word of god is the wisest perspective of god concerning any issue the word of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters because there are times that you are in a straight between your intelligence and the word of God there are times you are in a straight between culture and the word there are times you are in a straight between your instincts and the word at that time you will have the confidence to lean on the word of God as touching or as as providing the wisest perspective no man ever fails following the word listen every time you are in doubt of the voice of God let the word of God be his voice because even if an angel comes to preach another gospel that defies the integrity of the word then let him be accursed the ministry of the word many believers refuse the word we want results but the fortitude to be patient to stay to build to know it takes a lot of sacrifice there is a spiritual labor to receive the word that is the labor that the Bible enjoins that we have to enter our rest. Acts chapter 20, please, quickly, and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace, the word that is able to cause all graces to come towards you. It says, which is able to build you up uh -huh, and then give you an inheritance. Notice the operation of the word. You are commended to the word and that the word operates first by building you up. The word does not just give you an inheritance. The word vets your capacity to receive that inheritance. And if you fall short of it, it first will build you up. Then deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So you can know them that are sanctified by the inheritance they possess and demonstrate. And that the word of God is able to build you. Are we together now? The word is able to build you up. And to give you an inheritance. I think it's Galatians 4 that says for an heir 
as long as he's a child he says he differed not from a slave though he be lord of all so he is destined to walk in his inheritance but the bible says provided he is a child void of understanding he differed not the results does not show any difference between the child and the slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed so the word of God can wean us away from spiritual childishness and bring us into a point of maturity and then as a reward deliver to us our inheritance everybody say the word of God so you can see a weak person come Mike a weak person and standing as weak as he is and he's foolish enough to embrace the word of God are we together now the knowledge of his will the wisdom of God spiritual understanding the Bible says these forces begin to walk in him and suddenly it begins to build him up it builds him by transforming his mind recalibrating his understanding giving him God's perspective so he is now put in a position where he is able to rise above culture, rise above the sociological context of men. His viewpoint becomes the word of God. And then the Bible says to prove to you that he stayed in the school of the spirit. He is given an inheritance among the sanctified. His ranking and he's given an opportunity to transit states. And you see him and know that I used to know this guy. But now what has happened? He has been built and given something. I think it was day before yesterday or yesterday. I usually follow the news on channels, their online platform. And I saw the president decorating, I think, the new inspector general of police. And then I said, this is it. This is my message here. For whatever reason you have been built, then you are given something. And with that comes new responsibilities, privileges, etc. Are we together now? Now, what that man could not do, whoever he is, now he's able to do because he has been given something. That's what the word of God does. It takes you the way you are and begins to build you. And the system of the word is that it builds from inside out. This is where the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit. Because most people, listen carefully, most people seek to look at outward results very quickly. And sometimes we try to manipulate the world by making results for ourselves in the outer. No, it doesn't work that way. There is a working of the spirit within you. And my brothers and my sisters, when God perfects his work within you, the evidence must show. It will show in every area. It will show in your ministry and all of that let me tell you something about spiritual realities if you have it you have it if it's not there once you are doubting is it really there it means it's not there or oh, it's still on its way reaching you if it gets there then it will show it's true are we together now the word is able to build you that means one of the ways the devil is going to try to destroy you is to create whatever formula he can create to alienate you from contact with the world and you will be surprised that one of the ways the devil can distract you is even to give you a bible you will think just because you are holding a bible he gives you a word he can wrap you up in religion so that you are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth you will continue to flatter yourself that just because your eyes continue to make contact with a a book produced by zondervan or white taker house you will mean that you are growing in the world he says ever learning he saw the scribes and said ye search the scriptures for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me there are all kinds of ways the devil can distract us especially for we preachers because boy ministry can make you so busy and you will be searching the word but you are just looking for a sermon and you can array nice sermons and get all kinds of sermons you are instant as far as ministry is concerned but as a person the richness of the word is not in you and remember our spiritual fortification in this kingdom is the formidability of the word of God that you have meaning that if the word of God is not rich in and around you your life is at a risk when life pushes you it will have to take the word content in you to find expression 
are we together now when the word is not at work in you you are going to be frustrated and discouraged because my brothers and my sisters like pastor alpha was sharing we are at times where men are not just saying based on the world system there is a casting down um someone sent me a text about a funny way somebody stole a phone and i said he would have just begged they would have given him i mean why did you have to that's 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 what hunger does hunger can make women eat their children talk more of a phone when satan wants people to forget about god he manipulates their belly he manipulates the economy he heats up everything to make sure people forget about god are we together now but in the name of jesus it will be minus you some of you what god will do you even be afraid to testify because of the kind of anger around the people who are not in the mood to hear anything god has done and so you have to just live and come and dance in the house of god because you will feel unfair because of the kind of testimony you have even you will feel sad for them not because you are being sarcastic you are wondering lord this is and he says you believed me and so you committed me but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able persuaded that he is able john chapter 15 and verse 16 i was preparing this and the lord gave me a powerful revelation he said the word ordains you to be fruitful the word ordains you like you conduct an ordination service and you pour oil on a man and say from today brother abc you have become pastor this or whatever you are are we together now the bible says the word can coordinate a an ordination ceremony an ordination is a system of authorization and that the word like a minister can ordain you into a realm it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you the word speaking and ordained you to go and bring fruit our beautiful sister here stood as tiny as she was i was just smiling at her our dear one who stood here that wonderful lady and she stood with her cabin crew license that's an ordination are we together yes if you try to harass her around an airport even if she's not employed yet she's able to tell you no 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 i'm a license this and that that means i have received the authorization because these gates are still there remember our old gates and so there is a license and it says i have ordained you i didn't just send you i ordained you ordained by the word where is your pass into the realm of increase and you bring the word god said i will make you exceedingly fruitful and the gate opens there you go and for someone he comes where where is your pass and he says i'm tired and the gate said turn around weariness is not a key for open doors it takes the word where is your pass for a new level of the anointing and then you say i will make you exceedingly fruitful that nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins the word ordains it is true the word ordains let me indoctrinate you with this revelation get it ordained to bear fruit kabarako satire that means whatever you are involved in looks at you you come with a license ordained to bear fruit i'm a music minister ordained to bear fruit in the name of jesus that means there is a life-giving factor in your songs that must force them to reach the nations an ordination happened through the word ordained to bear fruit not ordained to talk stories not ordained to explain ordained to produce results men of god hear this the word of god is able to ordain you that you go and bring fruit not just go and get fruit to go and bring forth like a woman pregnant and then she brings forth something out of her a child so i can send you alone as weak as you are and say look at the multitudes that god is sending you to i may not have naira and cobble to give you 
but i commend you to the word of his grace and you feel weak in yourself you say look I, i'm unqualified and the word of god says hold on let me ordain you and the same way you know those days when they had, when they ordained anglican priests many things would happen those days we used to wear cassocks you know you wear the whole regalia from top it must touch the ground clean shoes well polished and all of that and you are so happy and um, they used to call us seminarians even the masquerades didn't flog us are we to guess we had masquerades that sometimes would come up to harass people we used to move in groups the masquerades would run around and dare not come near us because even the masquerade knows a priest from a that means that ordination creates immunity that satan is running helter skelter he comes to a house and sees you clothed with the word it's an ordination and they tell the demon go now i say you you come and go the word of god building fortification so don't be surprised when a thousand falls by your side and ten thousand by your right side it looks so close you are worried god says have you not heard that it shall not come nigh thy dwelling only will you stand and see watch the reward of the wicked ordained to be fruitful john 15 and verse 16 ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful if this is all you get tonight is worth it that you can walk around knowing that this fruitfulness thing i'm not getting it illegitimately or illegally i am ordained so as a man of god you go for a meeting you expect people to be healed you expect people to be delivered you expect that there be an outpouring of the holy spirit you expect revelations and signs and wonders and the moment you stand there and say praise the lord and the demons are flying out and liberating people is a token of your ordination is proof that you came with the word you didn't send yourself sent by the word ordained to be fruitful if i'm a destiny helper to you and then i come and i was supposed to pass you because of the investment of the word upon you it has been ordained to make sure the graces come to you and that word will compel me to want to come and help you and support you thank you Mike. are we together now ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful king of kings lord of lords mm. let your kingdom reign in my life adonai Adon, the Lord, Adonai. Let your kingdom come. It's our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Number two. The second key is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not just the ministry of the Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The second key to being fruitful is engaging the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Popular but very powerful. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Joshua Selman saying hallelujah not by might otherwise some of us will not be strong enough nor by power but by not the spirit my spirit saith the lord the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord that this fruitfulness will not be by might that this ministry exploits will not be by might are we together now by human empowerment not by power he says but by my spirit saith the lord but by my spirit this miracle will not happen by might nor by power the testimonies that many of let, let me tell you this let me tell you this truly speaking and i submit to you if you find your feet here then you must testify it's true 
it's a grace there's nothing to be angry about it's a grace we read there that god is able are we together now look at the gentleman that an angel called him gave him this if he didn't have a job you would think he's lying and he called the name of the place you can go and verify that the word comes and just like somebody wanting to steal from you the word continues to trail you until it surprises you you know how a thief follows you 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 think you are walking alone but a thief is following you to steal your phone this one is following you to make sure you are blessed did you not read in your bible that there are two spirits called goodness and mercy and that they can follow men They can follow you do you know honestly i i pray that you believe what i'm saying and my brothers and my sisters you will sit back and wonder at life and you will become an evangelist by force begging people to stop wasting their time and say look come come there is a fountain of living water the way you are going about it is going to end you in frustration come i have found when you encounter the world when you encounter the spirit you must be a testifier the woman said come see a man i know you are not interested but i'm begging you that's the reaction to a man who becomes marvelously helped by God. You become too grateful. You, the, the compassion burns in you. And you can wake your family members and say, look, let's be tired of this state in this house. There is a way out. The ministry of the Spirit. Isaiah 48 and verse 16. It will always be the word and the spirit come near unto me look up please hear this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there i am read with me the remaining part one to go and now the lord god uh-huh and his spirit had sent me so how were you sent the word and the spirit the lord god and his spirit had sent me the lord god his integrity and the spirit had sent me the lord god and his spirit had sent me to preach the lord god and his spirit has sent me to go and get a job the lord god and his spirit there are testimonies that if you don't believe the word you will think people are lying you will even be angry before the testimony finish i say is it really true the lord god and his spirit not a politician his spirit the last time the lord and his spirit came together that collision brought the recreation of the earth genesis chapter one don't turn there just just hang on here the bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. And then the spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. Verse 3, and Elohim said, light be. And the breathing of the spirit and the word ensured that God said it and he saw it. And he didn't just see it. You can see it and see what is bad. He saw it and he said, it is good. The Lord God and his spirit. I have carried this consciousness for many years and i pray i don't know the formula god will use to make this real for you but i truly pray that it happens to you especially for those of us who are in ministry the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit when god goes with you worship team helped us and sang the other time that when he holds your hands everything becomes possible i know we sang it as a song but you must find a way of believing it it is true the lord god and his spirit with god all things with god your music ministry possible with god even the enmity of all people that came from your background and know you and know your family and have kept prophecies in advance because they are so sure you will not rise you will be just like your father and your mother and the lord god and his spirit changing the writings blotting out handwritings rewriting truths the lord and his spirit 
but for his spirit and his word you would fail but the lord and his spirit you were supposed to fail but his rod and his staff comfort you they lift you up the lord god and his spirit has sent me walk in that consciousness i am not sent alone number one is that i am sent two i am not sent alone the arsenals that were sent with me is the word of god and his spirit the holy spirit is powerful and wonderful the lord god and his spirit when the spirit of god came upon a young lady called mary the bible declares that supernaturally she said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says that the power of the highest ah, the power of the highest a woman who was not qualified to be fruitful but when the power of the highest came upon her she left the rest to that power hers was to believe and say be it unto me the dynamics of how that one happened leave it to the intelligence of the spirit the same way the power of God will overshadow you and you start something that is laughable and by the third month everybody sits in wonder and says what has God done the Lord God and his spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost leave the power part anointed Jesus of Nazareth with a person the Holy Ghost you can't do ministry without the Holy Spirit no. you can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit I can tell you this when it comes to understanding scripture there is very little of your creativity and education quite honestly that plays a role you would need the illumination of the spirit are we together Elihu said there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty there is a spirit in man there is a spirit in man without that spirit there is no inspiration there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the breath of the almighty make it men of understanding you can't just understand no understanding is the holy spirit living out his intelligence through your mind so you sustain capacity that is not fair for humans to have the same way a spirit possesses a man and begins to live out its characteristics through the faculty of that man god is able to come upon you as the spirit of understanding and open up your fortitude to comprehend in an unusual degree and an unusual dimension bible study only aids it but it does not create it this one comes by the spirit is god speaking to us tonight please give us john 16 and verse 12 and 13 and then we'll quickly go to the instructions that the lord will have us i have yet many things to say to you but ye cannot bear them now jesus is speaking about the ministry of the holy spirit now how be it when he the spirit of truth that means I can trust every information that comes from him regardless of what my mind says the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you he will what does it mean to guide to coordinate you to make sure you are within the jurisdiction of truth he is able to coordinate you define boundaries so that you always stand in a position of truth that becomes an advantage the Bible says he shall guide you into all truth all truth there is a body of knowledge remember the Bible says that we are a chosen nation a royal priesthood a peculiar people are we together now it says we have been called forth to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his marvelous light not just light marvelous light an exact body of truth that qualifies you to possess a certain level of dominion within a dispensation is called marvelous light 
and the bible says the holy spirit can guide you can guide you you can read a book on finances you can read a book on leadership you can read a book on all of these things wonderful but when the holy spirit comes he will not just educate you he will guide you guide you guide you we are being guided by the spirit that is the help of god given to us guided the prophetic word came by the guidance of the spirit you can't sit down and just invent a word mm, i think you are saying this no he comes in the fifth month of the sixth year of this and that the word of the lord came like a messenger sent from the throne to you and when it comes you receive it the evidence shows the lord and his spirit has sent me the bible says he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he will cause you to be ahead not by predicting by taking you there he will show you the holy spirit does not predict because he is god he will show you this is the next line this is the system of advantage for the next years that come in ministry in life finances etc do you believe all i've been sharing blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her not unto them unto her there shall be a performance the performance is for those who believe 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 peace is conviction and the action that you take based on that conviction the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word the ministry of the word without the spirit will make you religious the ministry of the spirit without the word will make you superstitious it will take the word and the spirit that's why those who pray and crave for the prophetic without a foundation of the word will many times double into spiritism and witchcraft that's not backsliding they are not necessarily fake but the word of God does not define the coordinates of balance for them. And so you find out that they can dapple into what they themselves don't understand. Just because it's supernatural, they will give the credit to the Holy Spirit. Whereas is the spirit of a man can be exposed to the influences of multiple spirits. So it's possible for the Holy Spirit to coexist in operation with other spirits. Not necessarily in your spirit man. They can find expression around your faculties and you produce varying outcomes. Mm. So it's important for us to know the word of God cultivates in you the character the understanding of God's modus operandi so that even in the administration of the spirit you are defined by the boundaries that brings balance and edification to the saints it is dangerous that's why you have a lot of people continue to pray pray until they take them in the psychiatric ward the doctors will tell you have you seen many people get to the hospital just praying praying i'm not saying they are bad people but sometimes people have gone to the mountain to pray and return back mad you you can't credit that kind of thing to god they may be well-meaning don't be offended if your loved one has been like that i'm saying that their spirits were so open that space was supposed to be filled with the word but see every time satan sees vacuum he doesn't leave it alone he's obsessed with space if he finds space anywhere space through ignorance space through zeal without knowledge he's a welcome guest invited or not so when you begin to build capacity it's like borrowing vessels and leaving it empty he will quickly come are we together now and then those who continue to study scripture they pride themselves because the knowledge of the word has an intellectual dimension and the intellectual dimension itself is rewardable are we together now as a theologian as an intelligent person when you speak to people who are educated 
your ability to conjure thoughts that make sense it makes sense to civilization it makes sense to to um the 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 the, the context of men so you will think that just because you coordinated yourself well intellectually that means you have delivered according to the spirit no that's why jesus looked at the scribes and the pharisees and says ye are not knowing the scripture they thought it to be an insult because they believed they were better scripturally educated than jesus himself i mean these guys had they had the proofs of the entire torah in their minds they would recite it verbatim and jesus said you are still in error they felt offended don't insult us we are the doctors of the law hopefully sometime this year i will teach you how the sanhedrin council came the sanhedrin council started with moses it was a system of eldership that was created for him to pour his spirit to help him coordinate spiritual activities and all of that error religion the spirit was out of it up until we get to the roman government we still have a sanhedrin council but the spirit left remember there were 70 elders that were called come on now are you not bible students that's where it started from now in the new testament the one who instructed it they have been so organized they don't even know him again who are you we have been in this ritual for decades we inherited it from our fathers and jesus said no wonder no wonder just because a thing is very long does not mean god is there hallelujah this year you must embrace the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers the ministry of the holy spirit is not for those who want power you know that's the description that we have in church you want power they say go and watch benny him go and watch this go and watch that so that you get power no the holy spirit was given us an advantage the advantage of the believer hallelujah right where you are seated i want you to pray in one minute lord i open myself to your word i'm tired of shadow boxing i truly open up myself to your word the ministry of your word and the ministry of the spirit i open up myself to the ministry of your word let your word culture me let your word train me let your word mentor me Please pray. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to give you, is able to give you. I commend you. To the word of his grace it is able to build you up fruitfulness i have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit hallelujah praise the lord now very quickly i want you to listen to some instructions seven of them bishop oyedeko said we walk by common sense we run by principles but we fly by instructions the ones who produce pilots and work in the aviation industry, they are called instructors. Are we together now? The humility to constrain yourself to God's instructions. Every time a prophet came bringing the word of the Lord to a person, a family, he came with instructions. And all those who were humble enough to hearken to the instructions, saw all kinds of signs and wonders happen to them 
instructions can you pray in one minute and say lord give me the heart give me the heart to not argue with your instructions my son he says attend unto my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart from your heart they are life to those who find them please pray you are beautiful in all your ways lift your voice and pray you are beautiful in all your ways. Lord, I delight in your instructions. I delight in your instructions. You are beautiful in all your hallelujah please write this down listen I want you to write it in a way that you will always be able to see don't just squeeze it and congest it somewhere if you need to use a fresh page for it write it down not as a ritual but as a guide God is determined to help us experience fruitfulness and we're starting off by receiving these words from him are we together now the Lord calls Moses to go up the mountain are we together now and while he's up on the mountain many things began to happen and a finger came from heaven is that true and the finger began to write on the rock carved the rock and wrote certain instructions and he said carry that instruction go and give the people that this is what will guide them to be a distinct people yes that is the old covenant the law but the principle is still the same one of the things we receive up the mountain with god is that we allow his finger to write written by god's own hand that these are the precepts remember the grace to walk in them is already supplied so he gives you walk by this there is no blessing in the spirit that does not have conditions attached to them deuteronomy chapter 28 and when you read verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day then it says that you shall be set up on high above every nation all other nations and these blessings will come upon you to overtake you then it begins to list them it shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe pay attention number one the first divine instruction for us for this year be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress instruction number one be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress be intentional the key word there is intentional don't just leave it up to God to say Lord if you want me to grow you will do it you have to be intentional the same way you are intentional about cooking you take the rigor of going to the market and nothing will stop you not even your hunger you get to the market and patiently search out everywhere till you find the ingredients you go back home time is already gone the meal may take an hour or two but you are intentional about making sure that there is a meal in the pot that's how you must approach your spiritual life we are living listen to me in times where the moment you are careless with your spiritual life you will pay for it you have to be intentional write it down let me just buttress quickly on it place priority on your time with the word place priority on your time in prayers place priority on your time in corporate fellowship 
I say it again place priority still buttressing on point one on your time with the word your time in prayers and your time in corporate fellowship these are spiritual bailout systems these are spiritual strategies to keep us up and doing regardless of the storms and the vicissitudes of life the Lord told me this be intentional many of us have never truly honestly grown in the spirit there are people who truthfully speaking under God never read their Bibles doesn't mean they don't open it they open it only on koinonia just look at it and you are busy you just close it and say I will read it later on it's an attack every time you are neglecting the word remember the example I gave about a body the water is reducing from 70 percent to 30 to 20 until you begin to choke spiritually the word content it's important be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress place priority invest time with the word let me advise many of us here who are working class you have businesses or you have jobs please sit down with God and design a strategy for your spiritual growth you will never have time that you didn't create did you hear what I said you will never have time thank you that you did not create you will have to create and make time anything you don't create time for there is no time for it you eat because you create time for eating you go on a job because you created time for it if you don't create time for God in your life there will not be time for God God is not about to add one minute to 24 hours we're all given that and that's all we have per day you have to create time for some of us it may mean trusting God for grace to flog out the spirit of slumber from your life if your day is obviously occupied then you have to train your spirit man to be awake and invest in the world all of us may not have equal time every day but please trust God for grace to create time create time create time create time oh how I love your Lord they are my meditations all day long let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart embrace the word there was a very popular story of Smith Wigglesworth it was said if you went to his house you would almost be bored because all you will be doing is reading scriptures they will open the Bible you will share then you close it just laugh over and then you say let's do it again and then you open the Bible even in his photo you see him with a small Bible holding it no wonder he was from a cobbler became one of the apostles of faith the Word of God built him up gave him an inheritance if you have salary minus the Word of God you are in trouble if you have more degrees minus the word of God you are in trouble if you have more influence minus the word of God you are in trouble twice for even contending for influence minus the word anything minus the word is not just zero is trouble be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress for some of us you have not yet agreed on a place for prayer with God I mean personal prayer not just Tuesday prayer with prayer ban and prayer here in Koinonia you need to go the extra mile some of us have roommates and friends and of course you don't disturb and distract people if you trust God and cry the Holy Spirit you know this the way believers see God now is very disturbing People went out of their ways to found. There used to be in the campus those days, there's a place many of you don't know, it was called Lontenis Court. People would come, some under the tree, some near a chair, they just pile a chair and you are passing. Sometimes you are passing, you want to quickly go and ease yourself. You hear somebody just praying there. In other words, don't near here. This is me and God. But now, this obsession for convenience, please don't get me wrong. 
I'm not saying God wants us to be comfortable. But let me tell you the truth. If it is God you want to do business with, trust God for grace to conquer an excessive appetite for convenience. People used to pray in the rain. Rain, rain falling. They would lie down and say, let it finish on me. And God says, you do this to express your passion. Not because that's the activity that gets God to you. But it's a token of your hunger and desperation. Please find a place to pray. Find a place to pray. There's too much distraction in our world. And don't get me wrong again. I know that I'm talking to a larger body of people. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be sarcastic. Manage social media. Are we together? Manage this. Some of us, even if there is nothing, you have to text. You have to check something. Ah, let me check who is there now. Those things can eat up time. Time will continue to pass. Trust God for grace to stay with the word. Shakotos kabakata. Is there any problem while you are praying like this? No. This is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness. The rod of Aaron did not just board. It was kept somewhere. Location mattered. Not anywhere. There was a place it was kept. Samuel was lying down close to the ark when he had the voice of God. Anywhere is not where God meets with people. God is everywhere. But no sensible man meets with anybody just anywhere. You don't hold meeting at a junction where a mechanic is fixing a car and you say come for a board meeting. No. Atmosphere matters with God. It's true. If there is no place in your house, convert your toilet to an atmosphere. It's not insulting. At least nobody would disturb you when you are there. Shakatos kabarakata. Shaketos kete barakata. And you cry your heart, Oh God, open my eyes. There is one thing I can see that will change my life. What is it? It's not just to pray and then you just pray and then say amen and you are going. God has not responded. Were you alone? You didn't believe he was there? They that wait doesn't mean they that fast. It means they that lie down there and say, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. God honors the fate of waiters. I have benefited from waiting. It's not every time you are talking and praying. Download worship tunes like this. Come and meet the worship team to set something for you like this. And all you are doing is just lying down and soaking in that presence. And then his word will come he will send one word to you and it will light upon your family and your generation he sent a word to jacob listen we win by the strategies we receive from the spirit there is something i must see to win joshua knew this and he refused to move until the circumcision was done and here comes the captain of the host of god he came to deliver the strategy this is what you are going to do had the angel not come joshua would have been surprised at what jericho would do for him you know the story makes it cheap cheap victory is because of the strategy god gave not because the matter is not serious when god comes he has the ability to deflate every mountain like a balloon and you say where is the mountain before zerubbabel please learn to stay learn to stay learn to stay gentlemen you want to be established it's not all about just reading reading i must make it i must huddle you need to lock yourself and say lord one thing is needful open my eyes what is it it's painful to run around and merry-go-round and find out you still did not get it his presence has value stay you're a man of god stay don't just go around sending text messages i know you may be well-meaning please invite me you you've seen me preach the other day with promise the other day i preached with pastor femi i think you by now you know i'm a man of god no no stay and let there be a walking of the spirit it may be for days it may be for months but let me tell you when you truly stay with god and he comes to you you will be surprised what your life will become Number two, let's hurry up. Hmm. Be intentional, second instruction, about building capacity, underlying capacity. 
through proper exposure and useful word-based information i will take it again be intentional about building capacity through proper exposure you can underline the word proper exposure is a double-edged sword proper exposure and useful word-based information there are all kinds of information on the internet that propose success propose a good life there is a maze of ideas swimming all around the internet attempting to profess solution to the various predicaments of men but heaven and earth will pass away the bible says but only his word abides forever whatever information you grant access to your life like a drug it must be vetted on the platform of the word if it does not pass that test my brother and my sister don't waste your time because you will still go through the rigor of taking it out again let it never even get there in the first place capacity second kings chapter 4 and 1 to 6 don't turn there just write it down the challenge of the woman was an issue of capacity not oil the oil had potentials but the vessel was small so the oil reduced to assume the shape of the vessel and the prophet identified it he said i know what is wrong it's not necessarily a need for more oil he says go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few and she shot herself and the oil continued to pour and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped god blesses us according to his perception of our capacities matthew 25 he gave unto one five talents two talents one not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and in the end i have a teaching on this I will tell you that all the five people were tested because the man with five had the challenge of pride and overconfidence to overcome the fact that he had the highest his challenge at his level would be pride and overconfidence the man at two had the challenge of jealousy and ingratitude to overcome knowing there was someone higher than him he needed to be tested there the guy with one it is clear that it's even messy that brought that one because later on you see that his anger and none of the two spoke about the other person but the last one spoke about the rest in anger god tested them and he was right the end of the story tells us there are people who no amount of praying and fasting will ever increase their talents to three or four god sees that your most profitable spiritual and destiny position is two based on your capacity so it's not just the issue of god lift me capacity is god speaking to us god wants to enlarge our capacity and many times our minds are small the Bible says now unto him Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think ask or think that means your thinking and your asking holds the same value in the spirit you can ask something that your mind tells God don't don't bother don't answer again God answers both your prayer and your thinking your mindset also sends prayer requests to the spirit i can be well-meaning but koinonia may never be able to rise and surpass that mindset hear what the bible says that god is able to do all these things but is limited by the power working in us like tap from water from the dam limited by the channel given to it it can come out as a drop in a bucket whereas it has potentials to fill that bucket in one minute the mighty things that god is able to do is limited by the power that works in us please prophesy to someone seated to you say expand capacity pastors we need to expand capacity men of god businessmen expand your mind there is too much smallness there is too much smallness this is the challenge of africa we are superstitious about everything we are small small businesses small ministry small lives everything small we spiritualize our mediocrity and put together factors that continue to endorse it 
it says kings shall come out of you nations out of you refuse to be small it's not a blessing herein is our father glorified that you bear much fruit you need to expand capacity not to acquire things oh i must buy a new this a new that mm -mm. expand your mind and your mind will bring everything that will fill up that space are we together number three third instruction be determined to live by faith be determined the third instruction from god to us if we truly are going to walk in the experience of extraordinary fruitfulness be determined my brothers and my sisters to live by faith for the sake of reference write this down you don't have to project it romans chapter 1 17 romans 1 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 romans 1 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 all these scriptures say the just shall live by faith four of them in all in the bible one in the old testament and one of the renditions says the just shall live by his faith in any case the just lives by faith there is an obsession for results and evidence even before we start the vision speaks in the end you must believe god enough are you getting what i'm saying now the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you have to trust god you have to believe god death and life and let me tell you this it is true that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if the word of god is not rich in your heart your mouth will continue to speak poisonous things against your destiny there are many of us who our communications continue to minister woes to our lives we always speak of weakness we all speak of this and it's not the issue of confession jerry and let me say this man man is suffering man, don't do that don't do that the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue proverbs 18 and verse 21 it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death is like a tree life is like a tree your mouth is like the rope you use to fetch them you can eat death you can eat life death and life are in the power of the tongue make up your mind no matter what it is there's no food to eat in the name of jesus it is well i know god is faithful i know god is faithful lord i thank you i know you are making all things new ah your mother is sick are you aware she's been sick since last week in the name of jesus the word of god is working in my family let me tell you carnal people will insult you and say all these church people and this your god gave us brain be careful people's brains have sent them to their graves he's been sending people for a long time let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so huh. and so you speak the righteousness that is by faith speak it and you declare you lock yourself and you are declaring in one room that there are holes here and there rain falling everywhere in the name of jesus is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness i receive divine ideas lord i thank you all grace working for me and someone just calls you and say i'm about to leave zaria uh is it okay if you stay in my house he says I, I i didn't get you and god says remember all grace pick the key it's yours and you tell somebody say are, are you sure that that's all that happened all grace all grace all grace believe god oh i may not have money in my pocket but in the name of jesus i'm receiving remember i'm teaching the true riches God is putting something in my life that will draw resources. Gentiles, ministry looks like it's rising and falling and you stand and speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ is being exalted. He draws all men by himself. I receive the strategies. I receive wisdom. I have access to his will, to wisdom, to spiritual understanding. I am fruitful. The church is fruitful. Let's minimize the time we spend programming woes to our destiny 
convert it to times where you speak and create realities are we together beware of naysayers our society is full of naysayers they will always laugh you over you finish koinonia and go back home and they laugh say kai apostle can preach oh ah, ah. see him quoting scripture anyhow i wish it was easy you see those kinds of people may be well-meaning but they will innocently destroy you that's why abraham had to keep some members of his household down because he was about to climb the mountain to do something that was unusual and sometimes people can be too innocent to allow you obey god they can be too innocent to allow the word prevail compassion can be used by satan to stop you he can manipulate the compassion of men around you you want to fast and they say ah bah you are overdoing it even me i'm touched by your hunger and you say really and then you stop whereas the last fast was when god would have come live by faith number four this is a serious one now the fourth word of the lord to us all strive by the spirit i don't know if strife is a good word if it's not find a word that is most appropriate for you strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle write it down please the fourth instruction to us from god if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness strive by the spirit that's why i wrote by the spirit to be exceptional on the line exceptional in character and lifestyle i wrote some things here defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures all of these things are like claws that hold on to you and will never allow you strive to the place of destiny as ordained by God defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle that's number four make up your mind that this year and then as always that in the name of jesus by the spirit you will be flawless in character in lifestyle in communication that your words will minister life that you will be you will be flawless your life will be at a true living epistle say amen. amen there are two bibles you always carry the first is the one in your house the second is you you will always carry two bibles you carry this and carry yourself to your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation we don't like this but this is an instruction from god i see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your god and if you believe that with me say amen let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know 
in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you is a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction i was trained in the anglican seminary and we had what we call the apostles creed these are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction these things are not there again till today great corporations in the world have creeds when they have their board meetings they, they chant it sometimes it's almost like it's magical this is what we stand for this is this is that to deliver quality products in an efficient way in you know the most available time you see mature people millionaires with their ties becoming like children creeds are powerful you must have a creed that defines your life who are you you must have a creed that defines your family you must have a creed that defines your business you must have a creed that defines your ministry it doesn't have to be for public consumption who are you what is the worship team who are you what do you stand for what do you deliver to koinonia creeds are powerful we have lost this ancient mystery and many people do not know what they live for and stand for again you call a pastor and say what do you do you say i'm preaching the gospel you say, what does that mean you say don't, don't just I, I i'm preaching the gospel no Great. let's hurry up that's number five right make up your mind to be responsible write it down i pray in the name of jesus that the grace that follows this word will fall on us many who need to get this this year make up your mind that this year i will be responsible the word responsible comes from the word responsive respond are we together now don't be inactive don't act like the situation does not demand your attention our society is is brewing a group of very very sadly irresponsible people on all fronts to be responsible means to have a sense of obligation to have a sense of obligation towards life towards your family towards your destiny a sense of obligation to be responsible means to be duty bound you have to be duty bound don't allow the things that are your responsibilities and act as if it does not matter no you're a family man this is the year to be responsible over your family spiritually financially intellectually to coordinate the activities within the family to reflect christ you are a businessman you are a, you are a ministry you are a career person be responsible 
and this goes as as an added encouragement to our brothers let's trust god for grace to be responsible responsive responsive someone will have to get up and be interested in making things happen don't say they will do it no be the day that will do it i know god will send somebody to help me god has been helping us like that the rent will expire by october but i know whatever it is at least between now and april i know that rent will come Abba, is it not god that sits in heaven and you sit down and stroll yourself until the time reaches and then you turn around and find out that you are bankrupt and it weighs you down be responsible be responsible be responsible over your life be responsible don't just be roaming around town anytime in the morning in the afternoon you run around you're a man of god you are just kicking stones on the street and holding sugar cane in your hand and just smiling you are not acting responsible if you don't have anything to do outside go back to your house and sit down build your mind are we together you don't leave your house and come back by 1 a.m in the morning with no explanation no apology to anybody open the door for me who are you I'm, I'm back home my friend are you stupid this is whose house no let's be responsible say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. I, receive I receive grace to be responsible, to be responsible. wash your clothes clean your wardrobe before koinonia don't start looking for what to wear five minutes to koinonia and you find out all the clothes are dirty who did you leave it for to wash you are a young man don't act as if you're already rich you can outsource people to help you but you have not made the investment and 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 the impact that can allow people to come and wash for you so you bend down and wash if your clothes are dirty by 1 a.m get up and wash i wash everything you see a young man you are a young man and there are piles of clothes you are a young lady there are piles of plates you are not responsible did you hear what i said you are not responsible if you do that you have to settle down and be serious if you set a task discipline yourself to do it punish yourself in righteousness when you carelessly miss out on your tasks don't sit down just forgive yourself anyhow you were supposed to read a book i said it doesn't matter no you will not go far this is the price for the crown that you so desire and so admire God is not a magician. He doesn't make charms. There is a pathway. Number six, quickly. Two more and we're done. This is a very serious one and I want you to listen to it. When God brought this, I prayed this even for my own self, even before writing it. Resist the pressure of pride, competition, and vainglory very serious one resist the pressure this is the sixth instruction resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory proverbs chapter 16 please and verse 18 let me tell you something in my little life i i am yet to know the one thing that destroys faster than pride please we must trust god you know why i'm saying this because we are going to see results that will dumbfound us this year and chances are that when those results come our hearts can be haughty and can be lifted proverbs 16 18 pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall when satan wants to throw you he sends pride he sends a haughty spirit you must resist it society can massage you into pride do you know what pride is coming to a position where you fail to see like vashti that you are all you are because of god vashti never apologized to the king even when she embarrassed him the bible has no record of vashti coming to say king i'm sorry no there was no record even when vashti was banished you see a relationship between Vashti and Mordecai and Haman. It was very clear that the king was weak because he didn't want to banish her. 
and pride goes before a fall let me tell you this i have seen in my little life people rise to the sky and crash down in dishonor with all due respect there are men of god around the world that at one point or the other god helped them marvelously and for some reason their hearts became haughty and now it's almost as if you make reference to their past reject pride is something i have asked god to give me grace to to fight because it's very easy to be proud you know people come here and you see them acknowledging apostle joshua selman this and that thank god for those things but let me tell you pride can kill pride is like an arm robber it can be dangerous it can come into your house like a, an arm bandit and strip you of everything that represents honor in your life are we together let's look at one scripture and we're done proverbs 29 and verse 23 resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory a man's pride shall do what bring him down but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit what will uphold the, the humble honor there is a relationship between humility and honor god gives you increase and gives you a platform and you say lord i thank you but may it never enter my heart and while men are clapping god says no problem receive the uploads but let them know don't just say lord me and you we know mm -mm. let them know that you are the doer and god says you do this for me step into a new level a new level of increase this humility check is something that i want you to do for the rest of your life not just for this year two points under this embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system one of the ways that the lord helps me to stay humble is by always giving me visions of the past if for any reason you forget where god brought you from then you are already on your way to destruction the do you know esther almost made the same mistake of vashti that's to tell you that it the the seat itself had tendencies it was not about vashti it was about the inability if mordecai was the bailout for esther otherwise she would have followed the route of vashti it was only a matter of time and mordecai said remember remember madam remember that's how one day god will see you when people are clapping for you you know when people clap for me and send me text messages i receive hundreds of text messages every day and over 80 to 85 percent of them are people from different nations of the world your message has blessed me apostle of the nations apostle of this elijah of our time moses of our time. and i know that they are just innocently trying to say you are a great man and we appreciate you and i look at those things and i look at myself in the mirror i said mr man the day you become proud the day you let this enter your head and forget you were once a young boy confused and scattered that god took by his grace and mercy the day you allow the bounties of the palace to make you forget that once upon a time you begged for food that day you disqualify yourself from the flow of grace god truly opposes the proud i have seen this wreck the lives of pastors I've seen this wreck the lives of business people. I've seen this wreck the life of people generally. There used to be this song. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. How can I forget? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget. I will not forget. Let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this and that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me these riches he said but thou shall remember it means you can forget 
influence can make you remember God but forget his faithfulness money can make you remember God but forget his faithfulness ah God may I never get there oh I'm asking you in the presence of your people let it not happen to me if it means closing doors close it I rather remain at the level that will keep me useful than to get to a level where you become Ichabod. Oh, you once were anointed. You once were great. A haughty spirit is like pouring oil on steps. The terrible thing with pride is that your fall is seen by all. Pride is so deadly. It supervises your fall and you must touch the ground. Please pray in one minute and curse the spirit of pride. Some of them, this pride has destroyed some of our family members. It has destroyed many people. Pride has a track record of destruction. Shalakato sabrahasidekata. Clot yourselves with humility. Koinonia, this is God's word for us. We're a ministry that God has helped. But be careful. He has made the list among us like David. But be careful. Lest you begin to scorn at other ministries. Lest you begin to scorn at other men of God. Scorn at other people's achievements. No, that's not the spirit of the Christ. Humility, oh God, I've done my life. I am truly nothing without you. Never be ashamed to let the world know you are nothing without him. I will never forget oh. Hallelujah. Powerful secret. Every time you are praying with God, cry that prayer. Lord bless me. Oh, Sam, you are an exceptional worshiper. In fact, let me tell you how people act. In fact, all these musicians in Nigeria, they are not up to one tenth of you. Now, at first, you will resist it. Consistency is what creates conviction, not truth. Anything consistently repeated to you becomes a conviction, including flattery. Joshua Selman, Sam, ah! You are this and that and that and that. And first Sam says, now have a glory be to God. And later he says, it's true. It's true. Alexander, the way you are Elijah. No, no, glory be to God. But it's true. Taylor, make me Elijah's regalia. Let me shut down rain and this. And God said, no. The way I love you, but I'm consistent to my values. And not even my love for you will stop it. Not every destruction is caused by Satan. God himself can bring men down. Trust God for grace this year. Koinonia, let this be a trait in us that people don't have to say you attend Koinonia just by you chanting tongues that they look at your life and say this person is, no, this humility, we can trace you to this ministry. Are we together? You are a boss in office or you are this clothe yourself with humility towards your workers many bosses act as if they will never leave the job that's why when it's time to retire the members are happy they are praying and the moment the people retire loyalty is not there again let people miss your presence so much they go out of their way to want to see you the reason is because you demonstrate do you know the kind of message that comes when you are great yet humble i have met people with all humility our daddy prof here every time i see our daddy here truly speaking our daddy is one of the inspirations that has kept me humble alongside the leaders of cgc and i say this with all my heart i have learned humility from them genuine truthful humility when people who have gone ahead of you don't see a reason to say anything, it should bring you back to your knees 
to say lord help me let the little that god has done and is doing around the world through this ministry not get to us and, and i'm saying this even for the workers be careful because sometimes we can respect those above us but show our pride to those below us you are still proud you are just skillfully proud but you are proud avoid it embrace humility it's a prayer that i pray all the time let no amount of influence let no amount of lifting those of us who are in ministry i do this in the open because it's true but i do it too so that you will learn because the truth is that some of us have not gone far we have not started anything quite honestly but the, the haughtiness of heart will not allow us to humble ourselves and learn music ministers learn this too because music ministers are some of the people who pride can swallow them overnight one song can reach somewhere and everybody becomes very proud and no the moment people are clapping for you turn and join them to clap for the one who without you are nothing take god out of koinonia you would think we have been holding a charm all through because God is the secret. I say this in the open. What I'm saying will be millions of people around the world will be listening to it. I will still say it after 10 years. It is, I told God something. I prayed a prayer. And I said, oh God, it's a prayer I cried to God and he answered. I said, never show me the full extent of my impact. Just show me a little and that's enough for me. In other words, let me never know how far i'm impacting lives do you know why because our human nature when you see the extent of what you are doing sometimes you can sit down and beat your chest and say ah god boy you tried for me so that you will always remain on your knees and say i am nothing without you are you getting what i'm saying please learn this the moment you do this the devil will tell you you are falling your hand but god will say no that's how we climb the ladder we climb the ladder of honor on our knees not our feet number seven be intentional about walking in love that would be the last instruction from the spirit be intentional about walking in love john 13 34 and 35 very powerful scripture john a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another everybody say one another say it again one another as i have loved you are you seeing that you are it's not only husbands and wives that are given the mandate to love as christ loved the church but even the brethren you are given a standard to love and you are not at liberty to influence that standard god says that you love one another to the degree i have loved you this is true agape as christ loved the church so you love one another first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 we're going to read four verses 11 14 16 and 18 first john 3 quickly please is god speaking to us for this is the message listen carefully so there is a message coming from god now that we have heard from the beginning what is the message that we should love one another i have discovered that in the body of christ we love god a lot but the problem is loving ourselves and many people love god simply because they can't see him the same way you love someone on social media that you have not seen oh you are such a you are such a kind fellow and the person at the other side is having his his brother saying if i have a brother like this may the world perish and you are there saying he's a kind fellow the day you meet and say you are the one mm -mm. <laughs> and this is the message that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another verse next the, the verses i gave you 14 we know listen 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 we know that we have passed from death to life how not because we pray in tongues 
not because we have apostolic and prophetic ministries because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abided in death roommates hello workmates hello men of god hello family members hello brethren god is speaking to us god forbid that my mother god forbid that my sister god forbid that my brother i hate this in fact let let him even die sir <laughs> the bible says he's abiding in death next verse hereby perceive we the love of god uh-huh because he laid down his life now this is the sacrifice dimension of love god is not god is not hiding it from you that your love will in many regards require sacrifice because human beings are human beings that's all we are he says we ought to lay down our lives for who not for a pastor the brethren parents love your children i know they may not be perfect but love them don't curse and make woes uh -uh. children love your parents workers or superiors in office love your subordinates men of god love your members don't use them love them genuinely enough to pay any price under god if need be to serve them hallelujah we ought to lay our lives for the brethren the last verse my little children let us love in word let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth i love you genuinely truthfully ask god he will tell you there are pastors who love those who give them seats so if i see you compass if i see you holding an envelope i love you if i see you giving me a lift i love you come darling if i see you coming to stand and hoping i will give you anything the way i will eye you you see that now no we must love this is the challenge with many ministries the pastors love the rich and hate the poor they love those who give them this and so you turn members into psychophants and those who do not have think there's no place for them whether you are a child of the rich whether you are a child of the poor whether you're a child of whatever the mandate of the shepherd is to love genuinely and truthfully are we together either we are lying about this thing or we are sincere when god sees your heart of love he will send the sheep to you and says go let that man be your pastor let that man be the man of god over you he sustains the kind of love required for the kind of life and background and past you are coming from let us love you cannot claim to love god that you have not seen when your fellow man that you have seen the love is not there let me tell you this i have grown more because of love than because of prayer i have grown more because of love than because of bible study i have learned and last year the holy spirit spoke this to me the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of god says i can cast out a spirit out of a man the influences can leave you spirits not only stay in men a spirit can stay in a business a spirit can stay in your it doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man mm -mm. Man is their most preferred habitation, but not the only habitation. Spirits can stay in a business. They can stay anywhere. Anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits. They can stay in a challenge. A challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there. 
Are we together now? Now, but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom. The other part is that you must be transformed. Please say transformed. When Jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto, the messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61 and then Luke chapter 4, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings. Listen carefully. To the meek, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are we together? And then he said to set the captives free. He had sent me to proclaim, one of the versions who say, proclaim deliverance. There is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is through the accurate dispensing of the word of God. That means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension. Then your lifestyle follows suit. Are we together now? It is futile to try to do things. Any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking. Believers, a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind. You have to know this. It's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind, to meticulously mentor believers into understanding. Usually they think it is weakness. A major part of the ministry of Jesus was dedicated in mentorship. In fact, he did not finish the curriculum. When he resurrected, he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days, he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave. Their growth happened principally through his, the mentorship of the word. He started in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, teaching them the ways of the kingdom. This is how we function in this kingdom. When they embraced it, then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit. That means the ministry of the Holy Spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation. There is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation. But the richer part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is seen when we are transformed, not before we are transformed. The primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed. That means if we are not transformed, we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as can be seen in us. Most people think when the Holy Spirit comes, he just continues to transform you and then that's... No, 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 no. Transformation has an end. Are we together now? That means you should be able to attain onto a level... Of commendable maturity where the Holy Spirit says now we can do business together you have risen to a realm where I can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly transformation is powerful many believers will not contend for transformation and there is a consequence if you do not contend for transformation the, the, the consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty. Remember that the spirits don't need to only come. See, listen, let me tell you. Come, um, Dr. Mecca, look at this. This gentleman can i can speak over his life prophetically watch this and within the space of two three days even one day this man can receive a million naira two million naira now he has not prospered that blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men 
Because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held. The money is not in his mind. So he, he is not his own. It was a loan that was given to him prophetically. It becomes his when the money is in his mind. So he can hold on to that and say, Ah, apostle is powerful. And after two months, the, the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle. Are we together now? Because he does not know the ways of God allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources. Inevitably, no matter how careful he, used that, he uses that money, it must finish and must leave him. It's not an attack, it's the law. I've taught you. Because his growth does not allow this kind of result. Prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast. But because transformation was not there, it must leave him. Now, when it leaves him, he will come back again and say, Apostle, I brought 10,000 like that day. And I will still speak. I'll say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example. Now, after I take authority over that spirit, the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place, a place of habitation. Not finding any, the spirit will advise itself. I will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house. He's still calling the man. That means... You remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free. It finds the house swept, clean, but empty. And then the Bible says it gathers seven others. Jesus is teaching here now. That means this is how the realm of the spirit works. And returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former. And because of his ignorance, he will say the man of God is fake. The man of God is not fake. You are not transformed to sustain the miracle. Are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from? At least you, were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere no 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 not at all not at all but now imagine with me that god steps in over dr emeka's life are we together and then the lord blesses him still using the finance that that, that i'm giving an illustration around and this guy now god blesses him and he decides to say now that at least one million has come my destiny is bigger than one million but one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent are we together and just sort out my children now i can't even if i can't pay everything i can pay for them. i can rest while he's doing that he now subjects himself and said you know what i want to find out god's ways the ways are located for the prosperity of the saints and he begins to gather these teachings while he's listening do you know what he's doing he's closing the door this guy is prospering not when he's doing business, when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again. To preach deliverance to the captives. Many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house. Now, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, I would not do that. From church to church. From apostle to apostle, prophet to prophet, pastor to pastor, in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring. Are we together now? Yes. We will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong. Notice, no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy, he loses it through ignorance. Prophecy brings it. Ignorance. When the devil marks that you have this stronghold, he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming. This is how Satan mocks many men of God across Africa. Before they pray, the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back. He studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold. The door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. 
and the spirit says i can stroll around the service will soon finish and i will route through just one door of ignorance and i'm back to the life back to the business are we together very very powerful so this gentleman as he's transformed something is happening to him you will find out prophecy now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then i subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of god and the holy ghost the more i expanded my spiritual capacity the more his potential the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me now look at my life i'm a testimony from here to here i never want this place to just become a place of miracles ah there's a service so let's go you'll be healed you'll be blessed i agree but I, I disagree that you will be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based and not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you, doctrinally speaking. If you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory, to walk in the fullness of the victorious life, then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's taught that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days. And after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe that means that um, by, let me explain what I mean the believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results isn't it funny that believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say no 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 um, I don't like this I like this I don't like this it's pride the Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy flattery in religion and will never produce results the value of prayer is in the role that it plays 
while other kingdom principles are kept prayer does not just work generically regardless of your obeying other principles it's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer god must be answering spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of god if you choose a dimension and leave the rest so we have people who are always praying always delivering something always casting out demons now please i i, I don't say it with with a with a heart of sarcasm at all don't don't find offense in any way this way you will never become a portrait of the victory of christ it will never truly happen it was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever what then is the excellency of the finished work of christ then on the other hand we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free oh boy and their lives continue to show that this is not correct when they are sick they don't say christ paid for my sickness they go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right the possibility of sickness the possibility of defeat no matter how temporal is already a clue that victory is established in christ from the prophetic standpoint but it takes your engaging with god to make it manifest and people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave are we together I shall not die you are deteriorating no no god forbid i know that i'm fine you are going down you are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares you finish praying immediately and lie down the spirit say he's asleep now let's continue and you get up and say i didn't see anything you are joking there until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again there is something called the death of a fool it is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance we must embrace the whole counsel of christ if you did not prosper by default then you will not stay healthy by default you will not stay delivered by default it has to be engaged through growth they are stabilizers they provide the dimensions of your stability if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed i wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you you see time is a revealer and it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you are in trouble there is a dimension of jesus called jesus the way jesus the way jesus did not just say i am life he said i am the way a methodology it is still jesus this man who was proposing 
that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension and now you stand and wonder what do I do you must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word listen if you do not know the ways of God the primary way that we know God is through scripture the second way we know God is through the names of God the third way we know God is through the person of Jesus Jesus the Bible calls him the 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 express image of the invisible God and the last way we know God is through experience there are not many other ways these are the ways allocated and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your Christian life are we together two scriptures and then we'll pray thank you Mecca. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7 blessed be the name of the Lord wherefore say unto the children of Israel I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments seven and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God how do you know by the mighty acts there is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians Psalm 34 and verse 19 please look up it is not the best of God that believers are challenged however it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the Zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of god however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged God in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ and so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous 
not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um it says but the lord this is your advantage many are the afflictions of an unbeliever but he will remain there because he does not have the lord as his anchor but many are the afflictions of the righteous the advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the lord who can deliver him out of them all out of them all so the embarrassment is not the challenge listen believers stop allowing challenges to make you feel i'm not a christian maybe it's because i did not pray no no not at all not at all the bible tells us that many are the afflictions so it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook many are the afflictions of the righteous it says but the lord delivered him so god is a deliverer he delivers he delivers him what is deliverance i've taught you deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits no is the parting away separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress it's called deliverance the moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress be it demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God your life. No, no, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh jesus should come around this place as soon as jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of god the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the the reality of the victory of christ i love naaman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either 
you should be doing something praying about it reading about it there's there has if you are at ease when things are not going well it's a sign that you are not a serious believer it is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself but you should sit down and say look where do you know that god is moving where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i've read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom you see that now he does not know what to do but one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of god listen my brothers and my sisters the excellency of your knowing god is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection that insistence is what the bible calls faith it is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the afflictions so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not bad, you know, barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalances why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who... who who just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, 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 oh. my lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture 
and record what is not matching. Let that become your project. No matter, listen, 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 listen. In as much as you don't feel bad for where you are, you also don't feel good for where you are. You have to find a way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry, continually I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. Thanking you for the one you did March, April. But also admitting that my life is not yet in experience. A reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? 
when you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm thirty four and verse seventeen. Psalm thirty four and verse seventeen. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Matej Khalifa Saha Sekhenere Vakata. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 praise the Lord we are going to pray Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 and the Lord visited Sarah as he said there was a day he said it but did not do it there was a day the prophecy was still in motion now the time came when what God said he now did and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken verse 2 and Sarah conceived 
this is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone praying? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. 
let me tell you the truth your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture until you bring the agenda of God Lord give me peace so I can serve you give me speed so I can serve you increase so I can focus kabaritata shaliz kabaru zepediagata pray unto the God that doeth wonders lift me oh God so the nations can see your name and your praise let the oil come upon my life let the anointing come on my destiny Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Please listen to me. I want you to be very sensitive. The spirit of faith is strong in this place. Please listen. We'll be very fast tonight. The real revelation is what you have received now. The prayer, the miracles, and this is something that just comes in one sweep. This is the sustaining factor. You will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please i want you to listen there is a god that doeth wonders and god can arise you see the thing with god is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation and that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting god that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life. I truly believe, listen to me, that there is a dimension of favor that the church, not just individuals, must shift into. Otherwise, forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God. This issue of God today, money tomorrow, God today, argument, finance, is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing. You must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the god that doeth wonders the mighty god of heaven we honor you and we bless you thank you for deliverances thank you for healings thank you for prophecies thank you for the manifestation of your power Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ.
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now we're going please listen we're going to be very fast I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time listen take away anxiety just relax there is a God who is mighty it will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you are we together now praise the Lord thank you bring the lady under the anointing here the power of God is coming on one lady here we have to be very fast now just here I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such. A mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one I'm seeing the power of God come we have to be very fast but I'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love God but there is no progress I want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. I cost those chains now. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. Shake the paruka kusha kateli akapa. Inside and outside, I decree and declare: Be free now! Be free now! Be free now! Please, quickly, 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 let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please, so that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandas. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door on that chain, it must leave right now. One, two, three. I command every chain, the Paruta Shika Barakata, chain of darkness, tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. Yeah. I need a chain falling. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. 
the Lord is that spirit the same spirit that delivers that heals the Lord is that spirit not another it is the same Lord that gives salvation that heals the Lord is that spirit hallelujah I want to rebuke barrenness now first physical barrenness but then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness a state of unproductivity and as I pray this prayer many ladies prophetically the power of God will come upon you not necessarily because you are barren but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit and God uses them to signify the opening of gates in the name that is above all names I declare right now even as the Lord is revealing to me there are all kinds of barrenness in this place physical barrenness financial barrenness spiritual barrenness I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three right now that anointing is coming on people inside and outside those with physical barrenness issues God is stepping in right now and those with all kinds of related barrenness issues God is also stepping in at the count of three I declare it right now one two three let that power touch you right now I release you I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost I release you by prophecy I release you enter a dimension of fruitfulness I speak it to your life I speak it to your business I bless the word upon you Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, Amen. God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray to take lives, people will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising for this state shalis kobarakata i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Jennifer 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer we have to really Jennifer where are you from huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service there is something called Aleku you, you understand what I'm saying I'm seeing that name again where are you coming from where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I don't know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge. Relative to the grace that confronts him. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? A, yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter? Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen. God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. 
no 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 it's, it's not everybody I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now i'm seeing i i just held this lady and the lord showed me four one two three four ladies by the power of please why are they don't please don't bring people out that have not called please why are they here huh where is she from overflow one okay this is your daughter come mama where are you from where are you coming from we are from quarter two sir you are from quarter two quarter two yes sir. i have to pray for you there's somebody here when it's time to pray please no matter what overflow you are in um i want to pray for you by myself when they look at you they will think you are pregnant like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i cause it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you man that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine okay we'll, we'll pray for the sick ah, we have to pray oh. is she mad she's just not okay it's before that she was mad but now she was mad before yes when uh, it has been now uh one let's say eight months okay when she came here so she cannot talk and uh, other like that she used to this means all the, when she's talking so she no talk normally okay we'll pray we're going to minister to the sick we have to if not we'll, we'll take all the night here but we'll pray for her can she hear me my dear how are you you can hear me yes i will pray for you eh? and jesus will heal you because i'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin with what i'm seeing this lady will not cross this year they will just say survive by but there is a god in heaven ah. hallelujah we have to pray i hope they are not just coming out at random do we have huh? i didn't ask them to come out i said protocol you people should be able to work with the people so that we don't have you are the one come where are you from paladin paladin yes. place your hand on your stomach do you believe in jesus yes you believe in the power of the holy spirit yes. have you gone to the hospital yes i have done many studies what did they tell you is there nothing nothing and yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant yes. are you married about to sir. about to marry is your husband here yes sir. husband come where is he the lord wants to say a big major marital problem now Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces. And want to want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samaritan. What are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. Um, God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision. Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is what I'm, I'm saying. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first, then. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? But God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there in the name of jesus christ you, you see how this kind of demonic things are the stomach is protruding 
and the machine is not even saying there's fiber or something at least if it says there's something you know what to remove the machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy yet her stomach is protruding if you don't understand now you can put this innocent brother in trouble you understand what i'm saying you see how the devil works father in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare now watch the power of god ah, the power of god oh, this let me tell you the anointing is very powerful it's not for showmanship it's like a drug just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not god i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit madam let me tell you the truth you will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time i'm saying this by the spirit of god and this i'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach i lose it right now and i release you i set you free from this in the name of jesus my friend i pray for you look at me sir you believe in jesus the budget i'm seeing is very much you have not even gone you have not gone near halfway the budget eh? don't be embarrassed i'm not embarrassing you you need a real miracle this one is not just a destiny helper you need a miracle because with what i'm seeing that you wrote as a budget hi when is the wedding 12th october 12th of october god is faithful eh? i will pray with you the prophetic dimension of wealth truly there is father i pray by the power of the holy spirit surprise this my dear brother more than enough for your wedding in the name of jesus christ and i declare be healed right now be healed completely in the name of jesus be healed completely your name is jennifer okay i'll pray with you come i'll just lay hands on you all this jennifer i'll just lay hands i'm not getting any hold her collect the child please father in the name of jesus christ take away this reproach that i see in this family in the name of jesus christ i declare that the lord is giving you a new beginning in jesus name please come quickly in the name of jesus come my dear may the lord bless you and honor you come reproach is taken from your life in the name of jesus the power of god is coming on one ushering lady it's an ushering lady i'm seeing a mighty deliverance reproach is living right now by the spirit whether inside or outside i'm seeing one ocean lady the power of god is coming upon her father in the name of jesus let that miracle take away reproach in the name of jesus christ take away reproach you are jennifer in the name of jesus i pray for you in the name of jesus i pray for you my dear my dear hold her hands two of you just do what i'm asking you to do shout jesus as loud as you can because both of you need the same miracle and god is giving you that miracle he's terminating shame completely from your life there is i'm seeing a man here you are a pastor i know there are many pastors i can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come you are a pastor where sir come again i'm seeing what do you have i, I can't hear you. let him come i'm seeing you You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you and then i'm praying for you you will see the miraculous in a very strange way you may not lay hands on people like this but the spoken word as you are speaking you will see god begin to honor you and things begin to happen can i pray for you sir 
in the name of Jesus I release you into these dimensions in the spirit and everything that has been said I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is releasing speed now please hear this I want to pray I know that I always pray for this but I'm about to pray right now there is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside there are people who have compassed certain realms God wants to shift them please help them as that anointing comes sometimes they are going to begin to run by the spirit just run like this inside or outside father I'm the ah, my God I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the Spirit of the Living God I command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare speed 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 over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you're not wasting your time you are receiving speed In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand. Just that media stand. I'm seeing, and it's still the same grace for speed. I'm seeing media stand. I'm seeing that grace. There are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you. And I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the service. But two ladies and three men. A real grace. Real grace. The eyes. The eyes to see. Kalu sabra du shelet I quicken that grace, quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where do they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, let me teach you something. You see, the word of God is very powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Don't, don't sit arguing and saying, will God touch me? Will it change my life? No. God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare.
May the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things, but when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet, because you will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain financial shame in the name of jesus christ my friend what do you do come this man this what do you do a businessman sir. a businessman where in dandume sir come again dandume dandume katsina state katsina state yes in dandume, i want to pray for you you love jesus yes sir don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now. This doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but... The call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call. I'm stretching my hands. Lord, I don't know where these people are. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination i declare by the anointing and by the spirit of god draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
we'll pray for the sick now but i'm seeing a ring in the spirit enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately now you know that this is already it may be symbolic of marriage or a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it father in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but i'm praying right now that anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old in the name of jesus i curse it now by the power of the holy ghost i curse it now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing an anointing my god come for direction especially geographic direction the lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying they don't know exactly where to be based this is this this sounds funny but the lord there is an anointing that is coming giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying lord should i stay should i go should i travel should i stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row, just these people in front. I kept ignoring it, but I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that God is showing me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost. Restoration shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. There is somebody here the lord is bringing an anointing into your life you are getting into oil listen listen i'm serious now please listen to what i'm saying this can be a life and death prayer you see this spirit of death that is just sweeping around killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. And I declare every spirit of kidnapping, whether in Zaria here, Kaduna, that would just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, the gifts of the spirit, I call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life I speak to you please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone who is weary you are tired life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency and it's as though you are about to give up it's like the grace to continue is not there by the spirit of god i supply fresh fire for the journey every leader here whether a campus leader 
prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group, I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify in the name of Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night Thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God I call it back into your life now I call it back into your life now the Lord you are here and you are saying apostle we are late but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus please let's minimize movement this for me I believe truly without exaggeration is the greatest miracle I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle i want to make my ways right with jesus you are here overflow one two three four i want to give you an opportunity in two minutes please run overflow three now you can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time but if you are here overflow one two two b and then online please make your way here quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to... Yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my savior you are my king you are my lord tonight i receive by faith the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in this life from today and forever i have eternal life I'm a child of God, forward ever and backward never.
Please keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.